Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to discuss difference between runnable and callable interface in Java. First, let us understand what runnable interface is. So runnable is an interface that can be implemented by a class whose instances are intended to be executed by a thread. And there are two ways to start a new thread, either by subclassing the thread or by implementing the runnable. So this is the syntax of runnable interface, right? So interface runnable and it has one abstract method you can see that is run, which doesn't return anything and we will also not take any parameters, right? So this is the syntax of runnable interface. Now, let us create a class. I'll create a class. I'll name my class as maybe runnable, runnable demo, which implements runnable interface. So when it is trying to implement the runnable interface, it has to override the only method, only abstract method run. Right, so that's the error it shows here, right? Just click on implement methods. So run is the only method inside the runnable interface, right? So that we need to overwrite as we are implementing the runnable interface for this runnable demo class, right? So this is the run method. Now let's actually print something here. I'll just say this as a runnable demo. Now we'll have a main class like where we actually create an instance of this runnable demo, right? And how do we actually pass this instance to a thread, right? So we create a thread object. We first create a thread object here. Thread. Right, new thread object and pass the runnable demo, right? So, which is actually implementing the runnable interface to it. And then we start the thread, which actually creates a new thread and starts it, right? So, this is how we can actually use the runnable interface, uh, you know, uh, when we are working with the threads, right? So, let us actually execute this and verify. So when we actually use the start method, it internally calls the run method, right? Internally, right? That's the reason you can see runnable demo has been displayed here, right? So what happened? So we created an instance of runnable demo, the class which is implementing the runnable interface, and we are passing that as a parameter to the thread, and then we are starting it. So for that, we are using the method start, which actually calls the run method. Right, so this is how we can actually implement the runnable interface, right? Now, let us see what callable is. So callable is also an interface, right? So you can see the syntax here, which can be used to actually, you know, uh, with, when we are working with the threads, right? So you can see the syntax here, public interface callable, V is the generic type. So we can have, and you can also see there is one method here inside the callable interface again, same as runnable, but the name of the method here in the callable is call. And you can see it actually, it can throw the exception. And also it is returning some value here. So a generic value V. So this is the syntax of the callable, right? Now, what we'll do is to understand callable. So let's create a class callable, which implements the callable interface. As we are implementing the callable interface for this callable demo class, we need to implement its class, uh, method. So what's the method? Call is the method, right? Now we need to actually replace this generic uh, type to some, some value, some return type, right? So what I'll do is uh, I'll just say long here. I'm going to return long because we'll take an example of, uh, you know, calculating the factorial of a number. So for that, what I'll do is, I'll just take a number, read a number. So 
we'll create a constructor, initialize the value to it, and then maybe we'll take long long value. So this is the logic just uh, to create the factorial, just to calculate the factorial of a number, right? So count can start with number until it is greater than one. We are going to reduce the value by one. Fact equal to fact into count. This actually, you know, calculates the factorial of a past number, uh, you know, whatever the parameter is passed, right? So it actually uh, calculates the factorial of that number and should return the value, right? So, okay, this has to be long. It returns the long, right? Wrapper class. All right. So this is a simple logic within the call method which we are writing, right? So this we can call it as a task. So we wanted to actually execute this task within which we define in the call method of callable interface, right? Now let us create an object of callable demo class, which is actually implementing the callable interface, right? Callable demo, right? Now you can, actually you can't actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, create the thread object here because you can't actually pass callable interface as the parameter to a thread. So you can uh, even try if you want. First, let's see what's error here. Create constructor. Okay. So the constructor here, we need to pass some value, right? Let's try to find out the factorial of five, right? Now, you can even try this new thread of if you want to try this and pass C the callable interface. So you will get an error because if you see here, thread actually accepts only runnable task. Right? So we can't actually pass a callab callable, callable interface here. So let me show you. So you can see implement runnable, right? So it actually doesn't uh, take the parameter C. So see, it actually you see an error. Cannot resolve constructor thread, callable demo, right? Cache parameter to runnable. It only accepts a runnable. So we can't use the thread instance here, thread object here and pass the callable interface as a parameter to it. So then how do we actually submit the task or run the tasks uh, as a thread, right? So here we use the executor service. So what executor service is? Executor service is the interface again, which allows us to execute the tasks on threads asynchronously. So it is also present in the Java util dot concurrent package. And this executor service helps in maintaining the pool of threads and assigns them the tasks. So let me show you that. So for that, the first thing what we need to do is executors dot. So we have a method called new fixed thread pool, which actually creates a pool of threads. So you can give a number here, like uh, what's the number of thread pool you wanted to maintain, right? So maybe any number you can give it here. So that number of thread pool will be created. And what happens after that is you can actually assign the tasks to this thread pool. So then uh, the executor service actually assigns these tasks to the thread pool and those tasks get executed. So that's how the executor service works. So you can see here, once we reserve the fixed thread pool, see, it creates a thread pool that reuses a fixed number of threads, right? And you can see it actually returns the executor service type. So executor service, we'll import this. You can see it here. It actually comes from Java util dot concurrent package, all these classes, right? Now we have the executor service, right? With this, we can submit the task. So what's the task here? Callable demo, right? So callable demo, which is a class implementing the callable interface. So with this, what happens is we are submitting a task. We can call this as a task. So with this, automatically the call method 
So inside this class gets executed. So we can call this, if we call this as one task, this task gets you know, submitted and one of the threads from this pool actually executes this task. Right now, yeah, let's actually, okay. And if you observe here, it was returning, call method is returning some value. So we need to capture this, like let's actually capture this and, uh, you know, print it on the console. So how do we do that? If you see here, the submit method is actually returning future, future construct, right? So what uh, future is, future, it represents the result of this uh, asynchronous computation. So all, uh, if you observe this call method is doing some operation, right? So it is performing some task and at the end, it is actually returning something. So the result of this asynchronous competition will be, that can be actually captured in a future, future uh, interface, right? So you can see here, future, it is returning long, right? So we can have it in the long and the result. So this feature has the methods, so which actually can be used to check if the computation is complete or to wait for uh, completion. And also we can retrieve the result of the computation. Right, so, and how do we get the retrieve the result of this uh, job, right? So for that, we need to use a method called get. Get is a method which we need to retrieve the, use to retrieve the result of this task, right? So you can clearly see here, right? Submit, it is returning future, future object. So we are capturing that into a future object. And to actually retrieve the result of that, we need to use the get method. So we use the get method and it actually throws some exception, just add the exceptions to the method, right? All right, so now let's execute, execute this program. So you can see here, it actually is, okay. Seems like there is some mistake here. Fact into count greater than one. Okay, fact equal to fact, all right. So fact into is equal to count itself is equal to, this is equal to fact equal to fact into count, right? So this is the logic here. Now let me execute again. And now this time you can see the value of five factorial 120 here, right? So this happened because like we created an object of callable demo, we passed five to it. So the constructor got uh, like this initialized. And then what happened? We use the executor service to submit the task, right? So with this, the task got submitted and the call method got automatically called. And finally, this call method returns some result, right? So after the computation that got actually captured into the future object. And from that, we are retrieving the result using the get method. So this is how we can actually use the callable interface uh, to work with the threads, right? And if you observe, you can see here, the it is not stopped. The program didn't terminate, right? So whenever we are using executor service, it actually waits for the task to be submitted or the task to be completed for the execution, right? So once we are not, we know we are not using the executor service, right? So it's always a best practice to shut down the unused executor services. So to allow reclamation of its resources, right? So what we need to do is, as we are done with using the executor service, executor dot shutdown. So it will not execute or wait for any task to be submitted for it. So it just uh, terminates and the, there is no thread pool then, right? So then it, it actually terminates. So let me show you now, again, execute this. And you can see, we got the result and the, it got terminated this time. So it's not running anymore, right? So remember, we need to use the shutdown method at the end, uh, like after using the executor service. 
So this is how we can actually use the callable interface, right? So we have seen how to implement the runnable interface and how to implement the callable interface. Now let us see how to, what are the differences between these two. So that's the main like agenda of this video, right? So let's see that now. So if you see the first difference uh, is runnable was like introduced in JDK 1, 1.4, right? And callable was introduced in JDK 1.5. And the second difference is runnable has a method called run and callable has a method, single method, single abstract method called call, right? And then you can see the next one is run method doesn't return anything, but callable call method returns some, uh, it has a return type. So you can actually return any generic value, right? And runnable doesn't throw any checked exception but callable throws some exception. So it actually throws the checked exception. Now coming to this uh, right thread. So uh, runnable actually, so we can pass the parameter to a thread, whereas we can't pass a callable to, uh, as a parameter to a thread, right? And also you can see here executor service, right? So this executor service can also be used here in the runnable as well. So let me show you that. Executor service, same executor service, we can also use in the runnable. As it is doesn't return value, right? So it is giving error. You can just submit the job, submit the task here, right? So you get the output, same output, runnable demo, right? So. Uh, Again, we need to shut down this. Executor dot shutdown. Right. So this is how actually uh, we can use executor service for the runnable as well. So that this is not the difference, but we can actually uh, it's a similarity between uh, runnable and callable. Right. Uh, coming to the differences. Yeah, so the main difference is like uh, runnable, it can't return any value and it doesn't throw any checked exception. Whereas callable, so it returns a value and it can throw the checked exception. So this is the main difference, right? So in this video, we started with uh, uh, looking into how to implement the runnable interface and we saw how to implement a callable interface. And finally, we understood what are the differences between callable and runnable. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.